person has to work, this is the way to do it. I was a guest of a Miss Mary Perkins, debutante, athlete, and girl about town. Why I was here, I didn't know, and cared less. Please be seated, Mr. Jones. Oh, thanks. They're in pretty good shape, aren't they? I've never seen better. You do have an eye, don't you, Mr. Jones? I have two eyes, Miss Perkins. Both of them open. Please call me Mary. Okay, I'm Jeff. You got troubles? You are all business, aren't you? Why not? You're paying me, aren't you? That's right. You're in my employ. Well? Well, what? What's the score? You're way ahead. I'll try to stay there. Why am I in your employ? Ever hear of Muzzy Milton? The hoodlum? It's a matter of opinion. Yeah, mine. So what's with Muzzy Milton? He wants to marry me. That's uh, understandable. Also undesirable. So tell the man no. So what if he won't take no for an answer? So what if he decides to make trouble? Like what? Well, like a beating, or worse. You won't touch a hair on your pretty head. <laughs> you don't know Muzzy. So I'm a bodyguard. Would that be so objectionable? Beats going to school. All right. This is what I want you to do. We're giving a swim show for the crippled children next week. We'll be rehearsing all week. I want you to stay here during that time. I want nothing to go wrong. And that means keeping Muzzy Milton out. Understand? Yes, ma'am. One question. Yes? How did you happen to get mixed up with Muzzy in the first place? Well, sometimes I get bored. Does that answer your question? Uh-huh. Idle rich? Rich, but never idle. Yes, Archer? Mr. Milton is on the phone, ma'am. Tell Mr. Milton. Never mind, I'll tell him myself. Look, Muzzy, I told you not to bother me, didn't I? Yeah, you told me a lot of things. Now, look, sweetheart. Don't try and give me the brush or I'll let loose enough fireworks to light up the Coliseum. You're scaring me to death. Look, I've hired a man to keep you away from me. And he's rough. Real rough. Oh, uh, don't antagonize him. Yeah, I know. Tell him I'll be seeing him. You know? Look, beautiful. Nobody fools with Muzzy Milton. Nobody. I'll be seeing you. Well, <laughs> there's no sense in making you mad. What's the matter? You scared? Yeah. This guy's got a platoon system. That's right. But we're legitimate, Jeff. He wouldn't dare try that on us. Wanna bet? Look, you trying to needle this guy? I'd like to see him sizzle. All right, girls, let's go. And don't go away. I'll be right back. Where are you going? Oh, get some wardrobe. If I'm going to stay here a week, I'll need some clothes, won't I? Well, don't be gone long. I may need you. Mr. Jones. Yeah, honey? Be careful. I'll try. What do you mean? She's dynamite. Don't let her get you in too deep. You'll get hurt. Who are you? My name's Connie. I'm a picture girl. I do stunts. She hired us to do this show, but... Well, I'm telling you, be careful. She's in up to her neck. In what, Connie? Oh, Connie! I've got to go now. Just be careful. I'll talk to you later. Hi, Muzz. When did your boy get here? What boy? Snooper named Jones. Oh! He, uh, uh, he hardly comes around much anymore, Muzz. No? He won't mind if I wait around for him, huh? No, uh, no, uh, make yourself comfortable. Can, uh, I do anything? Yeah, shut up. I figured I'd check into the office on the possibility Sully might know something about Muzzy Milton that I didn't. He did. with you. 
Oh, nothing. Got a question. What? What do you know about a character named Muzzy Milton? You sick or something? You, Jones? I'm sick. Maybe, who are you? Heard you were looking for me. Who told you? You did. Uh, you, you mean you're a uh, Muzzy? That's right. Matter of fact, I've been waiting for you. That's interesting. Is it? Not to me, it ain't. Hey, sister, move over. To whom are you speaking? To you, that's whom. Get it over. Hmm. Some gentleman. You gonna move or am I gonna bust you? You ain't gonna bust me and I ain't moving off this stool. You better get off that stool or you'll be wearing it on your head. Hmm. Like I say, some gentleman, I'll say. That's better. That was real keen. Now do we talk? I'll do the talking, Sonny. You do the listening. Okay, so talk. Okay, so stay away from Mary Perkins. Know a girl named Connie? I know a lot of Connies. Swimmer. Yeah. Connie Hale, why? She told me the same thing. Oh. Connie's a smart girl. Now, why don't you be a smart boy? Look, Muzzy, I'm a working man. Girl offered me a job. Pays well. I'm taking it. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that job ought to pay off pretty good. About a pound of lead right in the stomach. I got a little advice for you. You take it, maybe we'll all be happy. Miss Perkins doesn't want to marry you. Now, why don't you be a good boy and forget about the whole thing? <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're feeling better, Muzzy. Shut up. What's funny? Plenty. I wouldn't marry that dame if she gave me a sack full of gold-plated rubies. What? Yeah, she's not giving me the brush off. Not yet. But, but she told me that... She'll tell you a lot of things. Don't fall for it, sucker. Then why don't you stay away from her? Because she still owes me... <laughs> that snooper is none of your business. Okay, Muzzy. I'll go tend my business. Be seeing you. Yeah, you're so right. You, uh, fool around, Snooper, and, uh, tag, you're it. Bye, Muzzy. You seen it, Sally? Hey, Jeff, don't tell, tell it to me. Muzzy. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell it to Muzzy. I, uh, uh, we, he, you, you oughtn't to take him so seriously, Muzzy, because, you, you see, he's really a very nice guy, and if... Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, seems like all the nice guys are dying young. Yeah, but, but... So but, long, Sabretooth. Thanks for the stool. <laughs> Sabretooth. As I drove to my hotel, I tried to put two and two together. It always came out zero. What could a rich, beautiful dame like Mary Perkins owe a crumb like Muzzy Milton? Except a shot in the head. Every time I think of a shot in the head, I think of my pal, Lieutenant Doyle of Homicide. Let me talk to Lieutenant Doyle. Doyle speaking. Hi, Lieutenant. Doyle. Man, that service. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have cleaned up a bit. Unless you have a logical explanation, you're going to be cleaned up permanently. Well, sure, I can explain it. Explain what? This. Your presence is requested 10 a.m. tomorrow, residence of Miss Mary Perkins, 11304 Grandview Drive, North Hollywood. This is your invitation to a murder. RSVP, Jeffrey Jones. What? Yeah, why? Well, I didn't send that. Oh, Jeff, when are you going to grow up? Mm, I don't know anything about it, Lieutenant. No. And I suppose you never heard of Mary Perkins either. Oh, uh, per Perkins, Perkins, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, go on. Doyle? What? Maybe someone is going to be murdered. Well, I hope so. You've already sent out the invitations. But who? Mine, maybe. Yours? Now, who in the world would want to kill you? Now, that's certainly the silliest question of the year. Now, stop clowning. Who's clowning? Mary Perkins hired me to keep Muzzy Milton away from her. Who? Muzzy Milton. Oh, brother. Do you suppose he sent this? 
Oh, Jeff, you couldn't be that stupid, could you? Yeah, you could. Will you stop answering your own questions? All right, Jeff, I'll pick up Muzzy on suspicion and general principles. And I'll question him about sending this letter, which he didn't. How do you know? Because if he were going to bump you off, would he be advertising it, especially to me? Maybe he didn't think you could read. Never mind what he... thought. You just stay away from the Perkins home until I pick Muzzy up, understand? That could take months. I'll have him locked up in two hours. Now, you stay home, do you hear? Yes, sir. All right. I'll be in touch with you. I'll have a light in the window. <laughs> Jeff, why couldn't you be interested in some nice, quiet occupation, like plumbing or something? Oh, I'm, I'm the adventurous type. All right. Now, you stay put. Do you promise? Word of honor. Never mind that. Do you promise? My, you are a cynic. Oh. Doyle withered me with a look and tripped out to pick up my friend Muzzy. What are you going to do? I broke my promise and started to pack a few things for my trip to North Hollywood. Twenty minutes later, I was breezing out San Fernando Way. All of a sudden, I had that old feeling that I'd picked up a tail. I pulled up at the Mary Perkins estate. My friend nudged up behind me. You looking for someone? Yeah, you. Get in that short and start wheeling. You a traffic cop? You a census taker? I said, get moving. The boss don't want you should see the lady. Tell the boss to go fly a kite. The boss don't like to fly kites. I don't like hoods pushing me around. Take a walk. Muzzy, next time, don't send kids. The next time will be the last time for you, mister. The boss don't like talking to himself. You go back and hold up your end of the conversation. Sure, sure. I left my surly-tempered friend and found myself back in the Garden of Loveliness. I gave you a piece of advice. Why don't you follow it? I've got a job. It pays well. The company's pleasant. Why should I walk out on it? Listen, Mr. Jones. There's a lot more to this than you think. Like what? Like murder. You've been reading too many stories. Yeah, I heard a couple lately, too. And believe me, they mean trouble. Who's going to murder someone? Just go away. What do you know for sure, Connie? Well, I know that you better get back to work, Connie. Yes, I... I was just saying hello to Mr. Jones. Nice to see you again, Mr. Jones. Thanks, same here. You two know each other? She'd see my picture in the paper. Seems she's a fan of mine. You seem to have lots of fans, Mr. Jones. I thought I was Jeff. I'm annoyed with you. Oh, why? You lied to me. I did. You told me you'd be back in an hour. I uh, ran into a friend of yours. Who? Muzzy. Muzzy? Did you have any trouble? Not much. You lied to me, Mary. I beg your pardon. Muzzy told me he wouldn't marry you for a sack of gold-plated rubies. Oh, poor dear. His pride is hurt. And between laughs, he said you owed him something. Now, what could that be? Now, just what could that be? Look, honey. I hired out as a bodyguard to keep a frustrated lover out of your hair. If it's something else, I want to know about it. I'll tell you all about it. Good. Tonight something I want to know now. Of course. Lieutenant Doyle got a letter inviting him here tomorrow. Who's Lieutenant Doyle? Detective. Homicide. Homicide? Did you invite him? Well, of course not. Why should I invite him? I'm supposed to be asking the questions. You're supposed to be taking care of me and for money. Now, why ask a lot of silly questions? Relax and enjoy yourself. I'll enjoy myself, but I won't relax. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Jeffrey Jones? Yes. Uh, who's speaking, please? Lieutenant Doyle. It's for you, Lieutenant Doyle. Oh. Hi, Lieutenant. Don't you hi, Lieutenant me. I thought I told you to stay home. I, I got lonesome. Well, you're going to be awfully lonesome if you don't start doing what I tell you to do. 
you pick up Muzzy? No, not yet. But we will, don't you worry about that. Well, don't wait until I get a hole in my head. Yeah? What possible use could you have for another? Now, you listen, Jeff. If he shows, get word to Sully or headquarters. You understand? Yes, sir. Now, you cut that out. Yes, sir. Goodbye, sir. Nasty temper. I have a nasty temper, too. Remember, you're working for me, Mr. Jones, not Lieutenant Doyle. She shot me a look that would have put the chill on a frozen parfait and started for the pool. I stood there remembering that I was working for her and wondering why. That night, I slept the sleep of the uneasy. Muzzy and Doyle gave me hot foots, and Connie and Mary just stared and laughed. Then a cold claw grabbed my arm, and I left my friends. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, wake up. Oh. Thanks, Archer. What? Is it time to get up? Time for you to get up, quick. What's the matter? It's Mr. Milton. He's in the garden with Miss Mary, and he won't leave. I'll be right with you. I grabbed a robe and slipped the 45 into my pocket. I had the feeling someone was going to get tagged, and I didn't want it to be me. I stepped out into the night and started for the pool. That feeling kept getting stronger. The feeling left me, and that old numbness started to creep over me. The flares went up, and I went down and out. Jeff, Jeff. Huh? You shouldn't have done that. Well, I didn't have much choice. But why did you have to kill him? I couldn't help it. He... Kill who? Muzzy. I killed Muzzy? I didn't want you to go that far. Where is he? In the pool. Well, but I couldn't have. Somebody hit me and, and I fell down. Well, he hit you, but you didn't go down. You started shooting at him, and he ran across the lawn, and then you shot him in the back, and he fell in the pool, and you collapsed. He's lying in the bottom now. Her voice sounded far away, like an echo chamber. I tried to listen as I dragged myself to the pool. My 45 hung loosely in my hand, and my brains rattled around loosely in my head. I looked down. There was someone in the pool, all right. And from where I stood, it looked very much like Muzzy Milton. I'll call Doyle. Dawn was breaking along with my head when Doyle and his boys got there. Well, Jeff, how did it happen? I don't know, but it happened a little ahead of schedule, didn't it, Lieutenant? What do you mean by that? Your invitation said it was due to happen at 10 this morning. Are you going to tell me about it? I don't know anything about it. All I know is I got pounded into the ground. When I woke up, Muzzy was in the pool. My 45 was in my hand. Yeah. Better give it to me, Jeff. Okay, Lieutenant. Careful of the fingerprints. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jeff. Thanks. What do you know about it, Miss Perkins? Well, earlier this evening, Muzzy, that is Mr. Milton, called and said he wanted to come over and get everything straightened out once and for all. So I told him I'd meet him in the garden. Well, I was hoping he'd be reasonable, but well, he got difficult. So Archer ran to get Mr. Jones, and when they got back, Muzzy hit him over the head. Is that right, Archer? That is correct, Miss Perkins. Jeff? Who knows? Go on, Miss Perkins. Well, then, Jeff just suddenly seemed to go crazy. He pulled his gun on Muzzy, and Muzzy started to run over towards the pool. Jeff fired at him, and Muzzy screamed and fell into the pool. Is that what you saw, Archer? That's what I saw, Lieutenant. Jeff, I... Yeah, Lieutenant? Uh, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to take you into town. Let's go. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay, you got a job. Let's get at it. Uh, you folks hold yourselves available for questioning. I'll be talking to you later. Of course, Lieutenant. Come on, Jeff, get your clothes. Doyle led me away with all the snap of a wet caterpillar. Connie looked at me and started to open her mouth. I shook it shut. If she knew something, I didn't want to waste it now. The boys downtown questioned me for a couple of hours. Then Doyle booked me on suspicion of murder. But his heart just wasn't in his work. Think, Jeff, think. Can't you remember anything that happened after they clobbered you? Not a thing, Lieutenant. Yeah. I wondered you'd get yourself in a jam someday that you couldn't get out of. You're a first-class moron. A registered first-class moron. They're protecting us these days. Oh. You don't really think I did it, do you? No, of course not. But how are you going to prove you didn't? 
With the help of Lieutenant Doyle of Homicide. If you had just stayed home like I told you to, this couldn't have happened. You know that, don't you? Oh, well. Have you got any idea who might have sent that note to me? Yeah, I got an idea. Well, give it to me. Connie. Who's she? One of the girls that works in the show. She tried to warn me a couple of times that I was on the hot seat. She even tried when you dragged me out of there, but I kept her quiet. Why? Because I wanted to talk to her alone. Well, all right, you're alone. Practically. I'll get her down here. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, get out a pickup on... Uh, hold on a minute. Homicide, Doyle speaking. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Connie Hale. I... Yes, Connie. Speak of the devil. I've got to talk to you, and I've got to talk fast. I sent that murder note to you. Why? I knew something was going to happen, and it wasn't going to be good, for Mr. Jones, that is. It's been cooking for a long time. I knew they were setting him up for the kill. All right. Please don't interrupt. Just listen. I don't have much time. Or... Connie. Connie, wait a minute. Are you there? Something cut her off. We'd better get out there. Uh, yes, Lieutenant. I I'm here. Well, all right, Connie. I thought something had happened to you. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I guess I must have choked on something. <clears throat> okay. What's the dope? <clears throat> well, I'm sorry to bother you, Lieutenant Doyle, but... <clears throat> Well, I've just been so upset lately that, that, well, I guess it's all my imagination, but I think that one of Muzzy's torpedoes <clears throat> is in on the deal. Well, I've got to go now, and I'll be down to see you later. <clears throat> Bye. But, Connie, wait a minute, wait a minute. She's gone again. You still want me, Lieutenant? What? Oh, uh, no, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll get you back. What'd she say? That's a funny thing. She started to tell me something and then stopped. When she got back on the phone again, she hedged and said she had an idea maybe one of Muzzy's boys got him. You know what I think? I'll bet it's what I think. I think we'd better get out there fast. That's what I think. Excuse me. That's all right. I got a report for you, Lieutenant. Uh, not now, Mac. I'm in a hurry. Well, it's the coroner's report. I'll put it here on your desk. Well, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see that. Here. Muzzy Milton, white, age 40. Killed by 45 slug entering left shoulder and traveling downward at 45 degree angle. Penetrating heart. Ballistics report. Slug fired from 45 automatic registered to Jeffrey Jones. Doyle. Jeff, did you get that? Downward? Yeah, but how? They said I was firing as he ran. What am I doing, shooting curves? Let's go. You dirty oh. little rat. So you tipped off the police and thought you'd tell them more, did you? You silly fool. You've tried to get Muzzy out of your hair a long time, haven't you? But it wasn't because he wanted to marry you. No? Then suppose you tell me why. Sure, I'll tell you. Because you bled him out of $100,000 and he wanted it back. That's why. If it ever got out that you owed a hoodlum $100,000, there'd be questions asked. And your position couldn't afford that, could it, Miss Gottrocks? You know, you're fairly smart, but not smart enough. Because you're never going to tell a soul a thing you know. Ever. What are you going to do? That's all arranged. Isn't it, Archer? Everything. Yes, darling, you're going for a swim. A very long and tiring swim. And no one's going to touch you. So that it'll need no evidence of murder. What do you mean? Would you like to tell her, Archer? I'd like that very much. You will go into the pool. You will tire very fast, as you will see. There will be a water hose. Every time you gasp for breath, it will fill your mouth and nose with water. Cold, stringing water. No. And we will sadly report an accident. An accident. A drowning. Rather clever, don't you think, Miss Hale? The other girls were... The other girls were tired and upset, so I let them go for the day. Sorry, Connie. Doyle's driver poured it on, and I kept asking for more. I had that feeling again, and I didn't like it. Get 
Yeah, but who did knock off Muzzy? Uh, Archer Slug. Yeah, who did knock off Muzzy? Archer Slug grabbed my gun as I went down. Muzzy came over. He didn't know what was going on any more than I did. He bent over to see who I was, and Archer ripped him open with a slug in the shoulder. <gasps> yeah, and then they dragged Muzzy's body over to the pool and pushed it in. Mm. Well, what about Connie? Well, Connie knew Muzzy. She also knew about the clipping Mary had given him. She overheard Mary and Archer making plans for a setup. When Jeff showed up, she realized he was the pigeon. Then she tried to warn me. She tried and almost got killed. They shoved her into the pool, stuck two water hoses in her face to keep her from breathing. We got there just as she was going down for the last time. 